Uh, I'm gonna start with just giving a few words about myself before I turn to the slides. Um, so, as Jana said, my name is Mona. Uh, I have a background in sustainable planning. That's where I have my master's degree. Uh, and actually have uh, my background in waste management as well. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, straight out of uni. I got a job at a, at, a, at a waste management office in a municipality in Denmark. And then I accidentally got promoted to head of communication because I was good at it. So I was in charge of getting uh, around 90,000 citizens and 10,000 companies to change their recycling behavior uh, through different initiatives. Uh, so after a couple of years of should I, shouldn't I, I decided to give it a shot and started my own company where that is what I do. So I help sustainable companies with their communication strategies and this can be the overall strategy, their content strategies. I do LinkedIn audits for them. I do uh, greenwashing audits. So I go through their communication material, their website and update it to make sure it's, it's up to code in terms of greenwashing and general communication uh, initiatives so that they can hit their target audience and make the dent in the world that they want to make. In the four years or so I've, I've been doing this, I've had the really distinct pleasure of working with both some really large brand names like Heathrow and Norwegian. I don't always mention them because ah, the aviation industry and sustainability uh, don't always go well in the same sentence. Uh, I've also worked with companies like Choose who do carbon offsetting. I've worked with um, waste management apps, uh, bike sharing companies. What is greenwashing? Briefly, just the action of making a product, a service, or your company sound more sustainable and environmentally friendly. What is it? Uh, well, it's vague language, irrelevant claims, misleading numbers, green packaging and narrow sustainability focus. Vague language is anything green sounding. It's, it's natural, eco, bio, earth, alternative, and green and farm fresh. The same with irrelevant claims, simply highlighting attributes that aren't relevant and that are obvious. Like there are examples of plants being marketed as biodegradable. This makes absolutely no sense. Misleading numbers. And the same with a narrow sustainability focus. So this is the most gray area-ish of these points. Um, but it is really important. And even if you won't get slapped with a fine for this, you risk a really large um, public backlash. So the fashion industry is notoriously horrible for the environment. I won't mention brands. Labeling a garment as sustainable because it's made from recycled plastic bottles or because part of the polyester is made from recycled plastic bottles or recycled old polyester material is greenwashing. And so how often does greenwashing actually happen? Uh, the European Commission and national uh, consumer authorities um, went through a bunch of websites in 2021 uh, and they believe that 42% of, the, uh, of the, the website have misleading or exaggerated or false claims. Why do we greenwash? And really often it's a case of accidental greenwashing. It's not um, a malicious deed. It's not something we, we do have a tendency to to think of greenwashers as being these like evil marketers who just want to uh, paint everything with a sustainable label and then sell a lot of products. It's important to know that that a lot of companies don't greenwash on purpose um, and it is a process. We are trying to make the world better and make products better. And yes, it would be wonderful if we could fix it all. Uh, so green hushing, um, this is something that um, 
people uh, don't know a lot about. It's it's a fairly new term uh, because there's now so much focus on greenwashing. It has had the unfortunate effect that a lot of companies who are doing great stuff and, and really working on more environmentally friendly products are scared to do any marketing because they are afraid of seeming like they are greenwashing. Don't shy away from talking about your your products and your services because it will be bad for your company uh, and it will lower sales. It will be bad for your clients because they won't get a, a true view of what's on the market and it will be bad for the market itself because they won't there won't be enough um uh competition uh because all all smaller companies who are doing amazing stuff in in one uh, or several areas of their business they are creating a demand for better products and better processes that green uh, larger companies are then also having to adopt.